is Burberry back? A week or two ago, we saw Daniel Lee show his first collection as creative director for the British Heritage brand. So I thought that we would take a moment to sit down and chat about Burberry recently, the Burberry rebrand, and what this new collection looks like and what does it mean? As we know, at the end of 2022, it was announced with this hair in my eye that Daniel Lee would be taking over as creative director of Burberry following Ricardo Tishy, who was at Burberry for the last four years prior. So I wanted to kind of start off with why do we think Tishy was let go and replaced by Daniel Lee? Ricardo Tishy is a legend in his own right. Lest we forget Givenchy under Ricardo Tishy, it's probably like one of the biggest eras of Givenchy that we know and see Givenchy as, you know, in recent years. And that is all due to him. Oh my gosh, the, Rock, the Rottweiler, the Bambi, the stars. It was a cultural moment, shall we say say. An amazing designer. He's been at Burberry since 2018. And I think what they did by appointing him at Burberry was they wanted him to sort of bring what he brought to Givenchy to Burberry. And it didn't really quite work out in the same way as it did with Givenchy. So CEO of Burberry, Jonathan Ackroyd, said about Daniel Lee's appointment, because there's, there's something very interesting in this quote. Daniel is an exceptional talent with a unique understanding of today's luxury consumer and a strong record of commercial success. And his appointment reinforces the ambitions we have for Burberry. Two key words here, commercial success. This is at the heart of what they're trying to really push for when it comes to Burberry strategy. Look, all of the, these brands want commercial success. They want money. And I think that Burberry in recent years has sort of uh, wavered and obviously it's been a difficult time for a lot of luxury brands what with covid and things like that and production issues but i think burberry is one of those brands that you know has such a rich heritage history and for it to sort of not have fallen by the wayside but it really wasn't a part of the conversations that we've been having for the past few years and they are really trying to change that. So, as I mentioned, Ricardo Tishy joined Burberry in 2018. And if we look back at their sort of sales figures, I will have them here next to me. They've sort of wavered around the sort of 2.7, 2.8 billion pound mark. They dipped in 2021 to 2.3 and then back up to 2.8 uh, for the full year of 2022. They've not done terribly. I think that it sort of says something that they've ki they kind of plateaued. They very much stayed around the same. There was no significant growth that we've seen, uh, you know, in some other brands around the same time. And I think that they were expecting a bit of an oomph that they didn't get. Now, again, bad timing. There was COVID. There was also Brexit, which is something to sort of keep in mind when we're talking about a British luxury brand, because that really hindered a lot of import, export, trying to figure all of that out with the legalities and also the production behind the brand. A lot of Burberry is made in the UK, but then with exports and things like that, it got a bit tricky. So that is also something that Tishy has had to deal with during his time. A big thing that Tishy brought to Burberry was this sort of very much a lean into streetwear, a lean into this drop system that we've been seeing a lot over the past few years. The drop system used to be very big in streetwear and sneakers specifically. And then luxury fashion has sort of, you know, been like, oh, what, what's that you're doing over there that seems very successful? I might want a little bit of a slice of this cake. Let's jump on the bandwagon. So, which Burberry definitely did. And they employed a bit of a drop system over the last few years. Um, they really tried as well when it came to the accessories. I think they did start to focus a lot on accessories, specifically bags. I think the Olympia is the one that probably had the biggest sort of fanfare slash media attention for a little while. And even then, I don't think it was particularly big. Um, the rest of the bags, they really leaned on the, the Thomas Burberry of it all, the TB, the tuberculosis of it all. I'm sorry, every time I saw it, that's just where my mind went to. A lot of people also see TB and think Tory Burch. So I didn't, uh, I, I just thought that they, they should have thought that bit a bit more. 
and they didn't. So I think accessories, which we're actually going to get back to, is going to be a big part of uh, their growth strategy. So Daniel Lee came from Bottega, single-handedly flipped that brand on its head, very dormant, um, had a very sort of specific clientele for a lot of years who were very, you know, like loyalists to the brand, but it really wasn't being introduced to a new generation of clients. And I think he did that with a lot of genius at Bottega. Now, there was a little bit of sort of would we say controversy? Controversy is too strong a word. But there was a little bit of sort of like, ooh, suspicions because he was very quickly let go from Bottega. Neither of which have sort of said why. There are rumours. I don't know how much of it is true. There was also talkings of a toxic work environment under Daniel Lee at Bottega. We don't actually really know why he left Bottega, but shortly after, it was then announced he would be the new creative director of Burberry. And then we saw a rebrand. Weeks before the his first Burberry show, we saw the Instagram wiped clean, right, of any evidence of a past. So we started to see what would be the new vision of Burberry. So we saw, like I said, a selection of celebrities. There's Liam Gallagher's son, whose name has surpassed my mind, Liberty Ross, Raheem Sterling, whom I only know because uh, Nia's a football fan, uh, otherwise I would have no idea who this young man is. Skepta, stuff like that. And if you sort of, we didn't get too much from these little teaser photos, but we did get a very big lean on London, the very Britishness of it all. The only thing missing was like a scone, really. We saw a change in the Burberry font to a serif font. Ring a ding ding, cheers for us, little bit of excitement. And I always thought when it came to luxury, like this sort of sans serif fonts made it not feel luxury. You know, there's something about the, oh, the, the, the calligraphy of it all that adds to the, to the richness of the brand. Anyway, that's just me and my uh, weird little rant about serif fonts, but happy to see a bit of a serif font. Again, leaning on the knight on the horse, you know, galloping and getting the princess, slaying them enemies. I don't know. We saw the trenches, we saw rain. Oh yes, that very English thing. Um, English roses, all of those little aspects. And then we also saw an introduction, a really big, like heavy push on this cobalt blue. Could this be Daniel Lee's new colour? You remember the Bottega green of his Bottega. Could this be the Burberry blue? Mm keep our eyes open, this might be it. Then we saw his new collection, right. My personal opinions, what are my personal opinions? It was extremely wearable, okay? There was no sort of, Mm, there was a bit of novelty aspects, which, which I'll get to, but there was no sort of like fantastical um, fashion frivolity behind it all. There was nothing on there that was like, oh yeah, well, you can only wear that down a runway and that's it. Or every single like piece really featured was extremely wearable. A lot of it was also very sort of utilitarian and practical, like wellies, coats that you can see yourself bundling up in, coats that look like blankets that you're just like wrapped around yourself and you're going to sit in front of a log fire with a nice cup of hot chocolate with a bit of whipped cream and some chocolate shavings and marshmallows on top. We saw these very British moments, the hot water bottle, again the incorporation of the roses and I don't know if actually because he's a Yorkshireman, shout out to the Yorkshire lads and lasses, um, the Yorkshire rose, that's like the um, the, the the flower of the county the does everybody have a Yorkshire rose it's a thing just like trust me on that I don't know if that was the incorporate um the incorporation of the roses into it also you would have seen these little duck motifs which had I not read I would not have understood this but there's a phrase which is like when it's raining and you've got that really very British awkward um conversations with an acquaintance where you're like oh good weather for ducks because it's raining and that phrase is where they took the ducks from hence the ducks are a big part of this collection blah 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 that's th there you go what i really liked about this collection was heavy emphasis on the burberry nova check blown up and in different colors one thing i always thought burberry did really well was when you went to go like if you did go to buy a cashmere burberry scarf you would look and you would just see this rainbow of all these different colors you could choose from and i like how that is now a part of the ready to wear collections i like these sort of kilts the the faux fur line trenches it's not sexy 
it's not tight as, as like a collection in general. Arguably my favourite pieces were actually the monochromatic men's pieces, not monochrome because it's not one colour but you know what I mean, the matching men's pieces that were like the sort of tight tops with the matching trousers, I think those trousers are really great and I may have to wander myself over into the men's work side to have a bit of a try of those because I think they're really nice. Oh, I hope, oh, I hope they fit. I want us to circle back to the shoes, but the other thing, let's talk about the bags. None of them have the TB. Excellent decision. A lot of them, again, very functional, very slouchy, very crossbody, very hands-free, very, they're not going to add any difficulty to your life. None of them particularly captured me, to be honest with you, and a lot of them had these, talking about the novelty, there were these huge, what are these hats called with the this and the this? There is a name um, and it has, it's, it's not in my mind. Editing Cassie will jump in to tell me what that is. Trapper hats. Also, they had these sort of faux fur tails as bag charms. God, do you remember those days? Oh my gosh, that wasn't that long ago. Nice little 2012 moment. That real lean on wearability. Now, very interesting fact here, not a single trainer slash sneaker was on the catwalk, which Tishy did a lot in his collections. Now, um, I think it was Business of Fashion that basically reported that as a category, shoes, is something that Burberry have really wanted to focus on for growth. And again, Daniel Lee at Bottega, we saw him take the Bottega shoe category and make that super popular. The Lido, the puddle boots, as much to my dismay, were very popular. Can he do the same thing for Burberry? Let's see. Again, all of the styles were very functional. Um, nothing that really I would be interested in. But there was also something that I think we should note, which were these sandals, the one functional shoe, unfunctional shoe, with these sandals that were fur lined, which, oh my gosh, what's that? Yes, reminiscent of the Gucci Prince town loafers that we all laughed at. Some of us bought, some of us didn't. Some of us thought it was like wearing cousin it on your, you know, under the soles of your feet. That's always been a bit of a divisive move those sort of fur lined shoes but Burberry is doing them actually a few brands have been doing them this season as well so um I'll do like a trend report or something about that soon because I, I just need to mentally prepare us all you know how it is I am excited to see what comes next for Burberry this is the first collection so we're only really seeing a small snippet of what's next but I think Burberry is a brand that has huge potential and it really just comes down to I also saw somewhere that they mentioned that Burberry is a British brand and maybe it sort of needs somebody that knows that the, the stereotypes and the culture so well to really lean on that because that is sort of its superpower. I don't know, but let's see. Let's see if Daniel Lee can do it. What are your thoughts on new Burberry? I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And in the words of my father, a Yorkshireman. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.